Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today as always is a busy day because today is Friday. Now I know I normally show you guys what I've been up to on Thursdays but yesterday I was out of town to go down to Washington DC to talk with a friend of mine about some of the current fish legislature and we'll talk more about that later so get ready. Um, this week was my typical busy week. Today I'm going around and spot cleaning tanks as well as doing water changes on some of the new additions in the fish room. Um, a couple of them I want to show you, so let's get started. Um, actually, first I'm going to go put some food in a bunch of the tanks so that we can see the fish easier. Now, as usual on Fridays, I just took some of the Sarah O'Nip and stuck it to the glass on a bunch of the aquarium so I can get an idea of how the fish are doing. These again are the German Blue Rams, Sid or Dwarf Chain Loaches, and Rummy Nose Tetra. Everybody's eating really well. Over here, we have green neons, uh, about 250 of them, and they also are looking quite good. Now they are a fish that I like to keep in a heavily planted tank, even in quarantine, otherwise they just don't exhibit fantastic coloration. Down here I have head and tail light tetras. Now they're not a fish I normally keep in stock, but for some reason this week I just wanted some. So we'll do a species spotlight on them eventually. They're just a nice, subtle beauty. Also in this aquarium, which aren't being very outgoing yet, are a ton of Epistogramma trifasciata. And I am excited to show you guys those. So once they settle in a bit more, I'll show you guys more about them. Over here, we have a fish that I'm super excited about. And that's because I've never really kept these before, but these are the little tetra that are found alongside Coriodorus histatus, the tail spot cori. And as you can see, they look identical. In fact, in this aquarium together are the Hestatus Coris and the Krieger Tetras. And the, in the back there, you can see a little Hestatus next to the Coris, or next to the Tetras. And it's almost impossible to tell them apart. It's pretty cool. I was, I was a bit skeptical, but they look fantastic together. So I'm excited to have both of them together to offer at one time for you guys. We all know I love my dwarf Cory, so I also got in a bunch of the Coriodorus pygmaeus or pygmy Cory. They are just so stinking cute. And they've done super well. Since today seems to be a catfish heavy week, another fish that I got in that I think are super cool are these little dwarf anchor catfish, Herigerdoni. They are absolutely adorable. Super teeny. A little bit nocturnal, but super fun to feed. They come out of the woodwork when it's feeding time. But for the most part, they're a little bit shy, tending to stick into crevices of wood or hanging out in plants. But you can see how they get their name, that dwarf anchor cat, based on that uh, pectoral shape. This is a mishmash of fish. Again, it's the ember tetras. It's some of the... Um, Bard pencils and some Tucano tetras as well as some rice fish and ancestrous and it seems like kind of everything's in that aquarium. But everybody's really happy so it's a good catch off for this time. Here are some of the last spawn of rams that I had. Um, they're starting to pair up which means I'm gonna have to sort them and sell them as pairs. There's some constant bickering between a few of the males in there. Um, they're a little over an inch, well, maybe an inch and a quarter at this point. Really nice looking fish. We have some Microdivario cubitae. Again, when they're on a darker substrate, they fire up green. Right now, they're more of a yellow color. We have some long, thin white clouds, which I'm having difficulty focusing on. You can see some of the finnage there. They're really lovely. Then in this tank, which is mainly black water, is uh, Sawbois Resplendens, which are the Asian rummy nose. And it always takes them uh, quite a bit to really fire up. They're just, you know, usually when you see them in stores or when I get them in, they're completely clear. And the females do stay that way, but the males, you can see one right there with the red nose. The males fire up with a bright red nose, red tips to their tail, and a steel blue-gray body. And they're really gorgeous, but I get these guys in super tiny to ensure that I get a lot of females. Otherwise, you just end up with all the colorful males, which are beautiful, 
but that doesn't work well for breeding. And these guys come from Lake Inley. They're a really unique fish, quite striking once they're settled in. But again, they really prefer this black water, hence the leaves in this aquarium. Over here we have a tank of SB Rasboras. Um, again, because there's not much substrate in here, they're not very fired up, but they get at that bright copper color. Now the fish in the 150 knocked the pellet off the glass, so there's this little bait ball. Uh, Danny Okayathet are the ones with the orange fins. And then there's the dace, and sort of everybody and their brothers trying to eat at the moment. Here we have some of the dwarf pencils, Nanostomus marginatus. They're absolutely, probably my favorite pencil. Uh, in this aquarium are also some Endler hybrids, as well as some Epistogramma, which are quite nice. Oh, and apparently a few random Hebrosis. And here are the Shelleys and the Sardine Cichlids. They're doing great. At this point, we can see that my super red ancestress are reaching sexual maturity and that a lot of the males are starting to get those really pronounced bristles, which means I can expect fry soon, so that's exciting. The Laodicara are all fired up again. I'm hoping that's going to mean some eggs for me. I am still struggling to get this fish consistently breeding. In fact, it's driving me insane. In here, we have some Amanos as well as my call shrimp, and you can see the Amanos are the clear guys, but the calls are pretty much every color in the rainbow, which is why they're in here. And you guys ask me about them a lot, and this is what they are. See, there's green and red. Just another quick look at the Hestatus with those Krager uh, Tetras. You can see how similar they look. It's really amazing. This is that most recent spawn of Ram Fry. As you can see, they're all still doing really well eating really well and starting to get a, quite a bit more color. Um, over here are my wild type Endler's Live Bearers, which are doing fantastic. And no vlog would be complete without a peek at Captain Cranky Pants. He is cranky as always, but still hanging in there. In a couple hours here, I have a friend of mine coming over to visit that I first met when he was just a teenager in the hobby. Um, now he's in law school and is working pretty hard uh, with a lot of the legislatures that sort of determine what happens with the different laws pertaining to fish. Uh, so there's going to be quite a few videos coming up with him in the next few months. Um, but as you can see, things down here are going pretty well. I am getting ready to start consolidating and clearing tanks in order for a new large import order. I want to focus on some of the gobies and stiffodons and some of the really other interesting hill stream species that start to become available at this time. As always, thanks so much for your continued support. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Uh, stop by my Instagram my face and my Facebook. I'm gonna do another plant giveaway I believe on my business Facebook page soon and stop by my website MsJinx.com where you can find my current stock list and my upcoming speaking